In this lecture, we introduce the Thevenin Equivalent Circuit Theorem and show how to replace circuit segments with their Thevenin Equivalent and then use the Thevenin Equivalent to solve for unknown voltages or currents in a circuit. Let's begin by looking at a circuit that has one current source, one voltage source, and three resistors. Now the Thevenin theorem states that this circuit is equivalent to a much simpler circuit that contains a single voltage source in series with a single resistor. The value of the voltage source is called the Thevenin voltage and the value of the resistance is called the Thevenin resistance. Now the way in which these two circuits are equivalent is that any external circuit attached to the two terminals on the right will experience the same currents and voltages throughout that circuit regardless of whether it's attached to the circuit we've shown here or its Thevenin equivalent. Provided, of course, that we've chosen the proper voltage value for the Thevenin voltage and the proper resistance value for the Thevenin resistance. Now because the Thevenin circuit is much simpler than the original circuit, its use could be very helpful in analyzing the voltage and currents throughout the external circuit. Now, of course, if we're interested in any voltages or currents that are internal to the original circuit, say the voltage across this 2 ohm resistor, then the Thevenin equivalent circuit cannot be used. Now, because the Thevenin theorem tells us that these two circuits are equivalent for any external circuits that we attach to the right of their terminals, then we can determine the Thevenin voltage and the Thevenin resistance by examining these circuits in two extreme situations. For the first situation, we'll look at the voltage between the terminals when the terminals are left open. Now again, if these two circuits are equivalent when attached to any external circuit, then they must be equivalent when the terminals are left open. So in this case, we'll label the voltage across these terminals as VOC, or the open circuit voltage. Now for the circuit on the left, no current, if these terminals are open, no current will flow through the 4 ohm resistor, no current will flow through the 3 ohm resistor, and the voltage at these two terminals will be the same as the voltage across this resistor and this 12 volt voltage source. Now all of the current from this 8 amp current source, because none flows through the 4 ohm resistor or the 3 ohm resistor, that's all going to flow through this loop. So we'll see 8 times 2 or 16 volt drop across this resistor and then a 12 volt drop across the source. So the open circuit voltage that drops from its positive to its negative terminal will be 8 times 2 or 16 plus 12. And that'll be 28 volts. Now if we look at the Thevenin equivalent between those two terminals. The open circuit voltage in this case, well no current is going to flow through this resistor because we have an open circuit. So the voltage that we'll see between these two terminals is just the voltage value we assign to this source. So in this case the open circuit voltage is the value of that source. Now for another extreme situation, let's see what the current flowing through the two terminals is if we connect them with a short circuit. So we'll now connect these two terminals and look at the circuit that flow the current that flows through there and I'll call that ISC or the short circuit current. Well to determine this current what I'll do is I'm going to call this node ground, I'll call this node the voltage here VA and then I'll use Kirchhoff's current law to determine VA. Well in this case if I write a nodal equation at this node I have 8 amps flowing in so I'll write that as negative 8 and then the current flowing out in this direction is we'll call this node voltage VA VA minus 12 divided by the resistance which is 2 and then in this direction we'll have VA divided by the re total resistance which is 7 ohms.
and from Kirchhoff's current law we'll set that equal to 0 and so multiplying VA we have 1 half plus 1 seventh and that'll be 7 plus 2 over 14 so that's 9 fourteenths times VA and then we have a negative 8 and a negative 6 if we take that to the other side we'll have a 14 so the node voltage VA that's the voltage at this node is equal to 14 squared over 9 volts and then the short circuit current well that's the voltage at this node divided by the resistance to ground which is 7 ohms so this short circuit current would be VA divided by 7 so that's take one of the 14 divided by 7 is 2 so we have 2 times 14 that's 28 divided by 9 amps so that's the current that flows through the short on this circuit. Now if these are equivalent circuits and we also short these terminals and then determine what the current flowing through the short would be, again call that I sub SC, well in this situation I sub SC that's going to be the value for the Thevenin voltage divided by the value for the Thevenin resistance. Well the Thevenin voltage is the open circuit voltage so we can come up with a relationship that says that the Thevenin resistance must be the ratio of the open circuit voltage to the short circuit current. So if these two circuits were to be equivalent then the Thevenin voltage needs to be the open circuit voltage which is 28 volts and the Thevenin resistance needs to be the open circuit voltage divided by the short circuit current. The open circuit voltage is 28 volts, the short circuit current is 28 over 9 amps, so the ratio would be 9 ohms. So if we look at that circuit on the left and we replace it with a 28 volt voltage source in series with a 9 ohm resistance, that's the Thevenin voltage that's the Thevenin resistance. So the original circuit or this circuit and then we attach any other electric circuit between these terminals. Any analysis of voltages or currents throughout that circuit that we attach would be the same if we use this circuit or the original circuit. So as you might imagine replacing this original circuit with this much simpler circuit could simplify the analysis for any circuit that we attach this to. Well, because circuits that involve voltage sources, current sources, resistors, and even dependent, dependent voltage and current sources are linear, we can come up with a clever way for determining the Thevenin resistance for a circuit like this. Now, The first thing I want you to think about is if we were to scale all of the independent sources in this circuit by a factor of 2. So instead of an 8 amp current source and a 12 volt voltage source we had a 4 amp current source and a 6 volt voltage source then the open circuit voltage would also scale by a factor of 2 and the short circuit current would also scale by a factor of 2. Well in that case the Thevenin resistance which is the ratio of the open circuit voltage to the short circuit current that would remain the same. Likewise, if we scaled the current source by a factor of 10 and the voltage source by a factor of 10, then we'd find that the open circuit voltage would be scaled by a factor of 10 and the short circuit current would be scaled by a factor of 10. And again, we would have the same ratio for the Thevenin resistance. Well, we'll get a very interesting result if we multiply 
the voltage and current sources by zero. So in that case what we'll do is we'll replace the voltage source with a zero volt voltage source and that's a short and we'll replace the current source with a zero amp current source which is also which in that case is an open. Well if we look at our equivalent circuit if we replace that voltage source with a short then the equivalent resistance between the two terminals is just the Thevenin resistance. So if we look at our original circuit and determine the equivalent resistance between those terminals that too will be the Thevenin resistance. In this case we can see that that's a 4 ohm resistor in series with a 2 ohm resistor in series with a 3 ohm resistor and that's 9 ohms which is the value for the Thevenin resistance. So another way to determine the Thevenin resistance when we have independent voltage and current sources is to replace those sources with zero and then determine the equivalent resistance. Well, let's take a look at a, another example and we'll see if we can apply the Thevenin theorem to simplify circuit analysis. Well, let's take a look at this circuit. We've got three resistors, a 4 amp current source, a 5 volt voltage source, and what we'd like to determine is the voltage, we'll call this VO, across this 6 ohm resistor. Now we could label, we could use nodal analysis, perhaps we'd label this node as uh, v, VA, this one is ground, and write, uh, use Kirchhoff's current law, we could write a couple of mesh current equations, but let's use the Thevenin theorem to determine this voltage. So to do that, what I'll begin by doing is, let me identify these two points in this circuit, and I want to replace everything to the left with its Thevenin equivalent. So the first thing we'll do is determine the open circuit voltage. So if I take everything to the right off and look at the open circuit voltage to the left of these two terminals, well in that case no current would flow in this direction and we'd have 4 amps flowing through the 4 ohm resistor. So the open circuit voltage would be 16 volts and that would be the Thevenin voltage. Now the short circuit current we were to short those terminals, then no current would flow through the 4 ohm resistor because it has a short across it and all of this current would flow through the short, so we'd see 4 amps, so then the Thevenin resistance is the Thevenin voltage divided by that short circuit current, so that would be 16 divided by 4 or 4 ohms. Now we could have determined this with the method we spoke about at the end of our last discussion and that is if we replace this current source with 0 then we'll have an open we'll replace this current source so if we look at the equivalent resistance between these ter terminals to the left well this path would just be open so we don't worry about that resistance and the only resistance we would see is this 4 ohm resistor. So now let's replace this circuit with its Thevenin equivalent. So this Thevenin equivalent is a 16 volt voltage source in series with a 4 ohm resistor. And now if we want to determine VO, VO would be the voltage across these two resistors which is 16 minus 5 or 11 volts times, now we're going to use voltage division, 6, the resistance over this, the resistance of this resistor divided by the sum and that'll be 10, so that'll be 66 over 10 or 6.6 .6 volts. So that's an example of how we use the Thevenin equivalent circuit to determine an unknown voltage in a circuit.